Great afternoon. Maybe took a little nap or something. But come back to worship the Lord tonight. If you would get a blue book, please stand and turn to page 33. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the pure hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. The purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he had done. Great things he had taught us. Great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear. Good tonight. Please remain standing. Turn to page 334. We get this done. We'll turn it over to Sister Sheila. She's going to bring a special, and then Brother Ashley's family is going to bring another special. Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels 
descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i and my savior and happy and blessed waiting and waiting look from above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long You got the yellow mark on. Yellow. And that one shut it off. <laughs>
Okay, you're next. Good to see each one of you here this evening, and uh, good to have my sisters with me this evening. And it's also good to see Nancy Hackney back there. She texted me this afternoon and told me good night. <laughs> and I don't know if it was a typo or not, but I hope it was a joke. She s said something about me being a human being, B-E-A-N. <laughs> And sometimes that might be what I am. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, uh, she knows I love to joke. <laughs> we were going to try to sing for you tonight. Do you know my Jesus? If you know Jesus as your Savior, you can say, I'm bound for the kingdom. Tree. 
Bibles this evening. We'll be looking at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege of knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. Thank you for the assurance of being bound for the kingdom. Thank you, Father, for being one who <clears throat> holds us when we need to be held onto. And Father, we would be nothing without you. And we would be lost. But with Jesus, we have a future that's glorious and wonderful to look forward to. But we ask that you would help us also to realize that we have work to do. We have assignments that have been given to us and help us to be faithful in those assignments. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> in Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse one, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Now we know the disciples, would uh, they were sent out and uh, they were given power to heal and to do several things. But uh, he sends 70 out also. And if you have a different translation, <coughs> you may notice it says 72. And you may wonder, where in the world did they get that? I wondered that too. <laughs> and so I, I did a little research, and uh, back in when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, turning toward the Promised Land, uh, they often had problems of rebellion and, and uh, complaints and murmurings, and one time they were murmuring about meat but God told Moses to choose 70 of the elders and he would put his spirit upon them. It was during this process. And uh, as they were involved in that, the 70, the spirit of the Lord fell on two others also that were out in the camp. And Joshua said, you want me to go out there and tell them to shut up? <laughs> and uh, Moses said, no. 
uh, would to God that he would pour out his spirit on everyone, which he has done uh, thanks to the coming of the Lord and, and uh, his death on the cross and his resurrection and sending us the Holy Spirit. So uh, it, uh, whether you look at it as 70 or whether you think there was two more that he may have added like it was in the Old Testament, uh, I like my King James on that one, <laughs> and uh, to stick with the 70. But he sent them out. And this is what he told them to do. He said, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. It takes laborers. My dad knew that when it was time for us to go pick the corn or cut the tobacco <laughs> or gather whatever needed to be gathered. And he sent us out to do it because he knew it wouldn't come in on its own. And those that are lost will not come to Jesus on their own unless we go and tell them how wonderful it is to belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if it's someone that we know, it would be a whole lot easier to convince them that it's wonderful if they didn't see us going around like this all the time. <laughs> if we would put a smile on our face and a spring in our step, whether we feel like it or not, uh, if we let them know that there's joy in the Lord. We need to do that. But he says, The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Well, that's what it looks like that Jesus is doing here, that he's sending forth laborers. But he tells them to pray for more laborers. If we think we can do it ourselves, we're sadly mistaken. We need help. We need more people to help us. So pray that he would send forth more laborers into his harvest. And he says, go your ways. <clears throat> Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. And they all said, I quit. <laughs> that doesn't sound very good, does it? If you were a lamb, would you want to go in amongst a bunch of wolves? And yet, that's how he describes it. Because he knew what the authorities were going to do to him and what they thought of him. And he told his disciples not to expect them to love them too, knowing how they felt about Jesus. But he says, Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Um, they were not to take anything with them, their needs were to be supplied wherever they went. He said, And whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the sound of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it, and if not, it shall turn to you again. In other words, put a blessing upon that house if they will receive it. And he says, And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire, going out from house to house. In other words, don't feel like you uh, shouldn't eat their food. The laborer is worthy of his hire. <clears throat> but I guess he would be telling me, if it's broccoli, go ahead and eat it. <laughs> eat whatever they put before you. Uh, how many of you like broccoli? I feel sorry for you. <laughs> but uh, eat what's put before you. Be content with it. Don't complain. He says, And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. The laborer is worth his, of his hire. Go not from house to house. They might think, well, it, we ought to let someone else share the burden. That was not his plan. Now, sometimes we don't understand God's plan. Sometimes we think there's a better plan. There's not. God's plan is always the best. Sometimes we're not sure what his plan is. But uh, 
we need to take the first step that he's told us to take. And he'll tell us where the second one needs to go. But you can't make the second one until you make the first one. <laughs> so we have to obey. We have to go forward. He says, In whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as they set before you, heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. They have been told that the kingdom was coming. John the Baptist had preached it, and uh, Jesus had announced it, and he's telling them to tell that wherever they go. But into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. <clears throat> Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. <clears throat> whether you receive it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, the kingdom of God has come. Jesus is the Messiah. And they were to do the traditional wiping the dust of their uh, shoes off or their feet off <clears throat> so that they wouldn't be taking anything from them uh, that it would all be staying with them. He says, but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. You know what happened to Sodom? Fire fell from heaven and destroyed the city. <clears throat> Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, <clears throat> they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Chorazin was just north of the city of Capernaum, and Bethsaida was to the east of that. And uh, he says, if these cities that received judgment had, had the blessing that you have, they would have repented, they would have changed. And what does the scripture say? To whom much is given, much is required. And if Chorazin and Bethsaida were blessed spiritually uh, with the word of God, how are we blessed today? And how much is going to be required of us? <clears throat> he says, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And now Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. In other words, if they reject you, they're rejecting me, they're rejecting God that they claim to believe. So, it was upon these 70 to go and tell the news whether it was popular, whether they were liked, or whether they were run out of town. <laughs> they were to go and tell the news. Then he says <clears throat> that the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They were rejoicing in what God did through their ministry over the spirit of time. And what does Jesus say to them? <clears throat> he says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And that's a message to us tonight, that we have received the gift of everlasting life is more important than any blessing you will ever receive. It should be greater than any joy that you can ever think of or any pleasure that you might think is good. Salvation, that place that's prepared for us, is worth it all. And uh, we cannot imagine how great and how wonderful it is. 
Think of the happiest time that you've ever been, the most joy you've ever had, the best you've ever felt, and multiply that by about a billion times a million, and you might be getting close. Rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for these that are here this evening because they love you, because they love your word, because they want you to speak to their hearts. And we pray that you've done that to each of us tonight. And Father, if there's a decision that needs to be made, a recommitment, someone that needs to trust Jesus, we pray that this would be the hour in which there's rejoicing, not just here, but in heaven also. Pray that your will will be done. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.